in any project during execution, there's going to be unanticipated events that occur. And those unanticipated events are going to cause change to the project plan. We're going to have to deviate from what we planned initially to do because of these circumstances. Now, significant change in a project needs to be documented and communicated to the entire uh, project team to maintain alignment in all the efforts and work that's being done by the team. And those objectives are achieved by using a change management process. The change management process maintains order. during project execution. It ensures that we have discipline. It minimizes waste. We don't have members of the team working on things that are no longer valid. Okay. We, we maximize use of our resources on the things that need to be achieved. It goes ahead and ensures the team members are in alignment. And to do that, we need to communicate what the plan is, what we've changed, and what we're going to. And the change management process is administered by the project manager. In fact, it's even more than an administrative function the project manager is responsible for managing change, making sure that the team is held together. Now, any change management process really is comprised of four steps. The first step is the change request. In the change request, we identify The change. What is it that we need to change and why? And this can be initiated by any member of the team. Any member of the team that feels we need to change something, either in terms of our design, our manufacturing methods, or our plan, can identify a change request. The change request could be anything from a recovery plan like we previously talked about because we're falling behind schedule, or modification of the design. We might modify the design because parts don't fit together, or perhaps we're having difficulty in terms of test performance, finding they're not meeting our design intent. So the change request well, essentially documents that we need to do something differently. The second step is the change analysis. Here, all affected members of the team analyze the implications of the change. Now, as the people affected by this change meet, because they're the most knowledgeable in terms of what's going to happen if we initiate this change. The analysis meeting, though, is called by and presided over by the project manager. And here we look at the impact of the change. We looked at alternatives. Are there other ways that we can achieve the intent of this change without doing what was proposed in the change request. And we negotiate a change in commitments. If you remember, in the work package, the individuals or the groups responsible for the work packages indicate the budget, the time required, the staffing required. If we change some of those tasks, those items are also going to change. And we need, need to negotiate how are we going to accommodate those differences? 
what are we going to do? We might redistribute staff, taking advantage, say, of slack in the schedule and allowing a particular task to take longer because it's not impacting the overall duration of the project and moving those people in, the, in an area where they're needed immediately to implement the change. We might reduce or extend task times. Again, where there's slack, we can extend. Where we have a, an overrun of time, we increase resources to compress. Or we might begin a task with partial information. This is a case that in a work package, we identified a certain amount of information required from predecessor tasks. But under the, the, the guidance of the project manager, we might begin that task without all the information. It's called a conditional approval. So that we can begin the task while we're waiting for the additional information, the incomplete information that we have to be, to be uh, completed and brought to us. Okay. So we analyze the change to determine why we need to do the change, how can we possibly implement it, and we develop a plan for implementing it. And when we have an acceptable plan that the project manager feels is workable, we have a change approval. And who approves the change? It's the project manager, because the project manager is responsible for administering the change and following through change. Okay. So we have a new plan of record now. Okay. This new plan of record incorporates the things that we've agreed to do in the change analysis. The project manager also establishes an effective date. When will this change take place? Will it take place immediately? Or will it be done in one or two weeks where we might want to complete several other tasks before we cut in this particular change? The fourth step of, pro of change management is change implementation. And in change implementation, the project manager assumes an additional role here. The project manager manages the change introduction. This change becomes a mini project unto itself. The project manager ensures that everyone is communicated with and the documentation is complete. So we have an accurate record despite the fact that we've changed course. So the project manager communicates to the entire team that we have a new plan of record. We change the engineering documentation. This is extremely important because it's very easy in project execution for a documentation to drift. Where we've built something that's not reflected in the documentation and later on, when we try to implement a major change, we find that we no longer have representation of what we're dealing with here. And we lose a tremendous amount of time. Updating documentation where there's a change is extremely important. We manage the work in process. We may have some, some parts being machined. We may have ordered some materials that are no longer pertinent to our particular design because we've changed things. The project manager oversees the management of the work in process to purge the system of the things we no longer need and to make sure the things we need as a result of the change okay, are performed, are done. And finally, we look at the distribution of resources. Project management might look at moving people from one task to another task 
to essentially focus on getting the change implemented and the, the new specifications addressed as quickly as possible. These are the four steps of the change management process. They could be performed in many different ways. And we really look to each, each team to develop their change management process. And in the formula hybrid project management submissions, in the project plan, each team is asked to describe how they're going to manage, pro how they're going to manage change. What's the process that's going to be used in managing change? In the interim progress report, each team is being asked to report on the extent of change that's been taking place, how the change process has worked, any revisions to the change process okay, that may have been made. And finally, in the, the final project review presentation, each team is going to be asked to assess how well did the change management process work in helping the team bring its, its particular project to a successful completion. Now change management is being emphasized to a great deal in the competition because it's extremely important, it's an extremely important tool to help teams achieve their objectives. Okay. That success in formula hybrid is directly related into implementation of a change management process. The difference between a team that's constantly reacting to a situation and a team that's executing against a well thought out project plan is the change management process.